Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 41 of Camera Position, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Well, you're all probably wondering, where have I been? And I'll tell you what I've been wondering where I've been, too. I am uh, delighted to be back after a period of time of finishing up my fall school term uh, in my classes and also, as many of you were doing, of course, preparing for the holiday season. But here we are. It's December 31st, the cusp of a new year. And I wanted to make sure that I got here uh, before the year was out. So thank you for your patience and waiting for me to return. I am back and hopefully back with a vengeance. I have a goal of getting 52 camera position podcasts in by the time the first anniversary of uh camera position rolls around. So I've got some hustling to do. So hopefully we'll have uh, some faster updates uh, to camera position coming up soon. Well, I wanted to start out with this Christmas present that I got. Um, and uh, one of the most visually interesting Christmas presents is a book of photographs by a photographer named Pete Turner, an American photographer. I've shot a photograph here of the book alongside a 12-inch LP, those of you who still remember 12-inch LPs, uh, with a cover photograph by Pete Turner. Um, this is uh, Hubert Law's The Chicago Theme, and uh, it's a jazz LP from my collection, and I certainly have a large uh, collection of jazz LPs, although I have to admit I had to go dig this one out of the... Uh, the dusty moldy pile uh, somewhere, but I knew that I had a number of Pete Turner jazz album covers. And in fact, this book, The Color of Jazz, uh, photographs by Pete Turner, is um, a book of photographs that Turner made specifically, not necessarily specifically for the covers of jazz albums, but many of these great photographs wound up on the covers of significant jazz albums. And this is a remarkable collection of those images. I've put in a link to Amazon.com so that you can take a look at this book. It's fairly inexpensive, which is terrific. And uh, it is a beautiful, glossy uh, book with lots of great images in it. And uh, uh, the the point that I wanted to make was that here it is, this great book by Pete Turner, a photographer who I think is largely undersung in the pantheon of American photographers. I think he's a terrific image maker, still working, still making some terrific stuff. And uh, this book really just reminded me about what a remarkable photographer uh, he is. And a remarkable photographer who extends the idea of color and surrealistic imagery in ways that really are just remarkable, especially remarkable in that so much of the work that he did in photography uh, or has done in photography was achieved long before the days of digital imaging and Photoshop and so forth and so on. I've uh, put this picture eye to eye right here in the podcast. It's the same picture that graces the cover of the Color of Jazz uh, book, and uh, I think it's worth taking a look at in its own right. Um, an eyeball in a can of uh, cling peaches. And, you know, here's this photographer making these pictures long before we could take these images in Photoshop and uh, with a couple of clicks of a mouse uh, fix up uh, a picture that, that looks surreal and uh, visually arresting like this. And also a photographer known for intense, punchy color, sometimes color that was intentionally filtered at the camera's lens so that what we got, uh, what he got out of his photographs were colors that were not the way the world really looked. So all of that got me thinking about color photography in general and color uh, photography in uh, Pete Turner's case in particular and the way in which he used color in a rather masterful way. And so I thought I would include that as uh, part of what we're going to do here in Camera Position 41. So I thought we'd start at the very beginning and talk a little bit about color theory. Now, wait, wait a second. Don't turn off your iPod or your computer. Don't uh, kind of freak out with the idea of theoretical applications of photography, because in order to understand how to use color creatively, I really think you need to understand how color works theoretically. And so what I've done is I've included a color wheel here, uh, which I, I grabbed from Wikipedia, So, uh, and I've also linked both the Enhanced Podcast and also uh, we'll put the link on cameraposition.com to 
the uh, Wikipedia color theory page, which is quite good. And the idea here is that by looking at the color wheel, and if you learned color wheel in art classes in grade school or high school, and what I'm about to tell you doesn't match up, it's because what we're dealing with here is the color of light rather than the color of uh, pigment. So now we use uh, the CMYK or CMY rather, CMY RGB color wheel when dealing with photographic information. Let's first start by giving you some names to use or words to use uh, with color. Uh, first of all, when we talk about a color in terms of saying it's red or it's green, we're talking about it in terms of its hue, H-U-E. The hue of a color is the name of that color. What we would say when somebody says, well, that's a nice looking green shirt you've got on. We're saying that, uh, that it, that's a nice green hued shirt that you have on. Uh, another name or word that we use to describe color is the idea of saturation. Saturation is the intensity of the color. How much pigment is in there, uh, how much color there is. So uh, when something is of very high intense red, we think of it as being a highly saturated red. When it is very uh, grayed out so that there is very little red but you can still tell that it's red, we say that it's a low saturation or low chroma. Sometimes chroma is used in place of saturation. And lastly, the value of a color. That is how light or dark it is. So when somebody is talking about a burgundy wine that is a dark red color, uh, they're saying that it is a low value red. Uh, whereas uh, a, a uh, pale blue sky with lots of wispy clouds way up high would be a high value blue. So low and high value, so hue, saturation, and value. Hue, saturation, and value, and uh, then sometimes we set, uh, we uh, substitute chroma for saturation. So if you ever see that you'll you'll kind of know what it is. And on this color wheel you can see that there are colors that are placed opposite one another, that uh, the color red is opposite a kind of greenish blue color called cyan, the color yellow opposite the uh, color blue, and the color magenta sort of a pinkish red uh, or bluish pink um, is placed opposite the color green on the color wheel. And we say that those colors are complementary. Magenta and green, red and cyan, yellow and blue. Complementary meaning that they are uh, complements of one another, both in terms of how they block out uh, light, but also in terms of how we perceive them. So when we see red and cyan, for example, together, we look at a color combination that uh, is quite uh, heavily contrasty. So the color, two colors placed opposite one another are in high contrast to one another uh, opposite the color wheel. Same deal uh, with uh, yellow and blue and magenta and green. When we look at colors that are adjacent to one another on the color wheel, we talk about colors being harmonious. Harmonious colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So we would talk about uh, pink and red as being harmonious colors, or yellow and green as being harmonious colors, because they are next to one another on the color wheel. We can also talk about colors in terms of being warm colors or cool colors. When we talk about warm colors, we're usually referring to colors that are in the red, pink, yellow spectrum of the color wheel. Cool colors are usually the blue, cyan, green colors. And the idea of uh, the emotional response that we have when we talk about color, uh, he saw red, um, he's uh, cool as a cucumber, cucumber green. So the idea that uh, colors and our emotional response to those colors are related to one another. And we, we certainly think of color in terms of an emotional response uh, as well. So the idea of understanding at least a little bit about the way that color wheel is laid out and uh, committing some of those color pairs to memory, especially uh, the complementary color pairs of uh, magenta and green 
yellow and blue and cyan and red, committing those to memory it can be very useful in terms of understanding photography and understanding certainly understanding uh, an awful lot about uh, the photographic world in terms of how photography works. But what I wanted to do with kind of giving you that little introduction to basic color theory was the idea that with that we can really begin to look at Pete Turner's photographs in a completely different way. So when we get a photograph like this one by Turner, a 2001 image called Cloud World, which incidentally was used as the cover art for Jorge Pescara's uh, 2005 release, uh, Grooves in the Temple, kind of a, a wonderful sort of tie-in between the sort of temple-like quality of the image and the title of the album. But um, when we get a photograph like this, one of the things that you can really see is that he has used complementary color relationships. It is fairly likely that he has enhanced the color uh, in some way uh, now that he's using digital photography. And, and in fact, the book makes clear that this is one of the few digital photographs in the book um, because he's really just started to use digital imagery. But the idea of the intense blue sky, the incredible, uh, incredibly intense yellow, obviously a complementary color relationship and a relationship that then enhances the idea of the vibrancy of those two colors. Extraordinarily high contrast in this picture. And contrast that, uh, no pun intended, with this photograph, Boat Wake, an image that is also in the uh, in the book and one that really struck me, uh, where what we have are very harmonious colors and the idea of these blues, all blues that are similar to one another but not exactly the same as one another and an image that is monochromatic, all blue, with just variations in value and slight variations in hue of those colors. Another color photographic concept is dominant color. And here is another Pete Turner photograph, this one called Night Train. And the uh, color is not monochromatic. There are streaks of uh, green and that little streak of red in there, but the dominant color in the image is this beautiful blue. So the idea of a color not necessarily having to be the only color in the image to dominate the image. Another example of this is another album cover from the book where the colors are, that are dominant are reds, and yet a red and is mixed with a sort of harmonious color of brown of somebody's face behind these red painted hands. So the idea that color, in, when it's used effectively, is uh, really becomes at least uh, in, in part uh, a huge part of the subject of the photograph. Well, all of this thought about color in photography and looking at these great Pete Turner photographs really made me want to make some photographs. And of course, I'd made some family pictures of uh, the kids and you know my mom and so forth at at uh, Christmas time, but. Um, I wanted to make some photographs where color was an important part of the image and the process of thinking about the image. And uh, it just so happened that I had just uh, picked up our uh, school's better light 4x5 uh, camera back, digital camera back, which uh, we had sent in to have it upgraded from being a SCSI control unit. If you've been in computers for more than a couple of couple of years you probably remember uh, SCSI interfaces and are glad that they're gone uh, but uh, we've now had the camera back upgraded to USB which makes it a whole lot easier to deal with with contemporary computers and so I set about making some color photographs and looking at the idea of color and uh, thinking about some of these Pete Turner concepts about the masterful way that he uses color in his photographs and I began to make some pictures and uh, thought about uh, the idea of color and I happened to have a little bowl of of uh, clementines uh, sitting around, seasonal favorites of mine, and uh, started arranging them and got out a single light, uh, just a, a, a tiny little focusing spot uh, that I happened to have, 
and began to explore the idea of lighting these objects and seeing them from a particular point of view. Um, if, if any of you out there have had the, the good fortune to work with a better light uh, scanning back, uh, you may know that another sort of euphemism for them is better get more light uh, because uh, you can't really ever get enough light on the subject, especially if you want lots of depth of field. So since I uh, really didn't have access at the at, uh, easy access anyway to uh, additional lighting gear, I just decided to use this one small spotlight and deal with uh, shallow depth of field in these images. And so I made this photograph, which I looked at as a very monochromatic kind of an image, uh, where I was just filling the frame with oranges. I wanted to give the viewer at least a little bit of an escape into the distance by including that dark space in the upper uh, right-hand corner. So uh, I called this little series Orange You're Gonna Make a Photo, and because uh, it's been, it'd been a while since I'd gotten out cameras and really started to think about making photographs in a, in a really serious sort of way. Um, so I made this photograph and I thought it was fairly successful. I made a couple of others with this just monochromatic orange theme and I, they, they worked pretty well, but I thought this one worked the best. And then I began to explore the idea of a complementary color relationship. Um, so orange, you're going to make a blue photograph. Um, so <laughs> is the title of this one. And the idea of the, uh, the light coming through this, uh, little pretty blue bottle, uh, that normally sits on a windowsill in the house, and uh, the uh, the idea of that blue and the complementary color relationship with the orangey uh, uh, nectarine um, clementine there. So and and playing with the light as it came through uh, the, uh, the 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 blue bottle, um, and ultimately what I wound up with is orange. You're gonna make another blue photograph because. As I waited for the scan back to complete its rounds, and it usually takes, uh, we, we have the older model of the scan back, so it's about a 15 minute exposure as the uh, scanner uh, scans down the film plane. It's a pretty remarkable piece of equipment though, and I get a, a 16 bit uh, 258 megabyte file out of the thing, so it's, it's a remarkably uh, wonderful thing, and I've printed these things quite large, 16 by 20, uh, so, and they look pretty good. And and I have to admit that I love one of the things about digital photo photographic uh, process is the idea that I started making these photographs in the morning and finished them in the afternoon. Uh, so uh, what I wound up with, though, as I was looking around was Orange are going to make another blue photograph. And this uh, reflection of one of the... Uh, uh, oranges in the surface of the flat surface of this blue bottle. And ultimately, while I think I, I may reshoot this uh, and add some additional fill light in uh, in the scene, which I didn't have access to uh, today, but um, I really like this idea of the light being superimposed or the orange being superimposed on the flat surface of the bottle. And it really satisfied me, I think, quite a bit in a creative way, uh, having looked and spent quite a bit of time in the last few days looking at this beautiful book of Pete Turner's photographs. Uh, I really liked this idea of being able to make uh, these images that were about color and about the way the color world works. Um, and uh, what I'm now looking for around the house is I'm looking for things that are red and uh, uh, green and purple and so forth and so on. So uh, a wonderful e exploration of color, I think, is about to ensue over my next uh, few weeks. So, And I would encourage you to take a look around and find out what, what things that you have around you are uh, really beautiful, interesting colors. And how can you use your knowledge of the color wheel and the world of color uh, to uh, to take a look at, at how color works and how color relates uh, one color to another. So uh, go ahead and take a look at Pete Turner's website, PeteTurner.com. Again, I've linked it off of both the Enhanced Podcast and off of CameraPosition.com. Uh, and uh, I've also put a, a couple of my uh, orange, you're going to make another blue photograph, orange, you're going to make a photograph uh, pictures up on cameraposition.com so you can take a look at those as well. So 
Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for being patient with me while I was gone. And uh, thanks to those of you who have left comments on the iTunes store. Uh, if you have a few minutes, I really appreciate those kinds of comments. Or drop me an email. Let me know where you are. I love hearing where people are, and I especially love the quirky places where some of you listen to camera positions. So send me a note, uh, jeff at jeffcurdo.com, and uh, let me know uh, how you're doing here in 2007. And uh, thanks for joining me, and hopeful to see you again on another episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com